Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1476. Hey, in this video, we got to see how to use the awesome sum ifs function to add expenses for any time period. And this will involve adding with three conditions. Now, here's the formula we're going to use. Here's the data set. Here's the resultant report. Let's go see how to do this on sheet 1476. All right, so we have date, expense, and amount. Now, at first sight, it might just seem like we need to add here with a single condition. For example, I look through this column here, and anytime I see rent, which is the criteria here, I got to grab that number. I keep looking. When I find another rent, I grab that number. And I add them all up here. But I want to be able to type in any lower date and upper date and have the formulas adjust. Now, I also added a twist here. If I click somewhere, hit the F9 key. I have randomizing formulas in here that are changing the dates, expenses, and amounts. Just for fun, we will hit the F9 key. That evaluates the whole sheet and see our formulas change. All right, so let's see how to do this. Click in cell F11 equals sum ifs. And I'm not going to use the one with no s. That's a much older function. I want to use the one with the s. All right, sum range. That's asking you to put in all the numbers you potentially want to add. Now, I don't want to click and drag because the data set is pretty tall. So I'm going to click in the top cell and then use the keyboard to highlight all the way down, Control-Shift-Down arrow. Now that range, and you can see the screen tip over here, sum range, that actually needs to be locked as I copy the formula down. So now I'm going to use the F4 key to lock that range. Now when you use F4 to lock it, it also has the advantage that it jumps back to the active cell. Now I'm reading the screen tip. In order to put in criteria range, I have to type a comma. So I type comma. Criteria range 1. Well, that's the whole column. And then criteria 1, that's the condition for that column. Now notice it says 1, and then 2, and 3. So we're actually going to have to look through the columns in this data set three different times. Now for some ifs, this is actually an and logical test. We can enter the columns and criteria in any order we want. Now I'm going to enter the expense column first. So I click in the top cell, Control, Shift, Down arrow. We need to lock it, so I hit the F4 key. I'm looking at the screen tip. I'm going to type a comma to get to the next argument. Criteria 1, that's the actual condition that some ifs will use as it looks through this column to pick out the right amounts. Now, that's a relative cell reference. So as I copy the formula down, I need the cell reference to move. Now, comma, criteria range 2. Well, we have a lower and upper date. I need to ask of every date, are you date greater than or equal to the lower date and less than or equal to the upper date? I'm actually going to have to, for criteria range 2, enter the date column in twice. So I click in the top cell, Control, Shift, Down arrow, F4, comma. I'm going to enter for criteria 2, the lower date. Now, I'm going to click on that lower date. I do need it locked, so I'm going to hit the F4 key. But that will not work. If I only use the date, it'll just look for exactly that date. Not only that, but if I entered both of these dates, there's no date in there that's simultaneously both the 1st of January and the 11th of January. So I need to add a comparative operator. Before the cell reference, what I want, since this is the lower date, I want any date that's greater than or equal to. So I actually have to type in two symbols. In math, we have a single symbol greater than or equal to. But in most computer languages, we have to enter in two. The greater than symbol comes first, and the equal sign always comes second. Now notice, the cell reference turned black. That means there's something wrong with our formula. And there is. Those comparative operators actually have to be in double quotes.
for sum ifs and other functions like count ifs and average ifs to understand that that's a comparative operator. Whoa, it's still black. That's because we have to join comparative operator to whatever's in that cell. So right after the second double quote, I'm going to type the join symbol ampersand, which is Shift 7. And that crazy construction is how you join a comparative operator and something from a cell. Comparative operator and double quotes, join symbol, and then, in our case, the lower limit. All right, I'm looking at my screen tip, comma, criteria range. Click in the top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4. Now, comma, criteria three. Well, I need my comparative operator first in double quotes. Double quotes, less than or equal to, and double quotes. Now I use my join symbol, ampersand, Shift 7, and I click on my upper date. Now I need to lock that, so I hit the F4 key. Wow, look at this. I can actually move my screen tip. That cursor right there allows me to click and drag my screen tip. So we're all the way to criteria three. Now, one way to help you understand this is that whole condition, actually, it'll be easier if I go to criteria two. That whole condition says bigger than side of greater than is pointing over towards the column. That means as it looks through, it's got to find one of these that is greater than or equal to the lower. When we get to criteria range 3, that less than means it has to look through. And whatever date it finds has to be less than or equal to that upper limit. Now I come to the end, close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down, come to the last cell and hit the F2 key. We have to verify that all of the cell references are pointing to the correct location. And they are. And there we go. So for this particular data set with those randomizing formulas, these are the totals for 1-1-2018 one, one, all the way to 1-11-2018. If I come up and change this to 1-1, one, one, that means the totals here are for this one single day. So it looks like on the 1st of January, we only made purchases for food and house. If I were to hit the F9 key, oh, it's randomizing the entire data set. So in this incarnation of the data set, there was one expense. Now, I can extend this out to the 30th. So this is for the whole month of January, and there are the totals. And if I hit F9, F9, you can see the formulas are updating every time we create a new data set. All right, that was a little fun with some ifs with three conditions to create a report to add up all of the expenses for whichever lower and upper date we enter into our spreadsheet. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And we'll see you next video.